spirit is like the wind You can never see it, but you can feel it It's not visible to the eye, but you know it's there <laughs> Yeah, I know what's going on in this world The spiritual warfare My name is Sarah Srep. I'm a realtor with Realty Group. What inspired me to be a realtor was just kind of brings me back in full circle of how a family took my mom under the wing and helped her learn the language, learn the geographic of the neighborhoods, um, learn the culture. It's the same thing as real estate, the language in a purchase agreement, the demographics of the neighborhoods that you purchase in, and the, the the, the culture of things, right? I had this moment I shared with a um, I shared with a buyer. Same situation. He immigrated to America like 10 years ago. Worked a nine to five job, minimum wage, saved up all his money, and we closed on a home. A family brought him in, took him under the wing, and they looked to me for to take them under the wing and really educate them the same way that that family did for my parents one day. We grew up in a neighborhood called Mount Airy. We called it the Project Homes. Um, and we were really close-knit because we were so close in age. We all went to the same school together. Uh, we all kind of were just really family-oriented, spent a lot of time and did everything together. We didn't have like the traditional, like going to Valley Fair or going to like state fair or anything like that we didn't have enough money we went to the farm and we farmed our own vegetables and our own fruits and uh, we went fishing for fun back then in the day was definitely a different time um, we were able to walk to the stores get on the bus we were able to you know go to our friend's house and and we would all look out for each other our parents would know each other parents and um, even just being in the neighborhood, there's a lot of different ethnicities. Um, my mom was still able to understand like whose daughter that was from a whole different culture. You know, it was just a type of bond that the Mount Airy kids had. Some of the people that I grew up with in that neighborhood, I just closed on homes with them. So being able to represent where we came from and how long we've come knowing that we were considered project homes. We were low income family. Um, the odds were against us. We were um, first generations in America. To be able to advocate for the same people that I grew up with and walked in their same shoes and shared their journey has been like the most inspiring thing for me and really just speaks to why I do what I do. Um, I'm Mac Phillips. I am the coach and founder of Minnesota Venom Youth Football. It's important for us to start our program and have it based in St. Paul for numerous reasons. One of the reasons is, of course, I grew up here and 
you know, I believe in paying it forward. Um, growing up, I had people in this community who helped me, brought me to practice and, you know, helped me stay out of trouble. And, you know, I found a home through sports. I found brothership through sports. So I think that, you know, me giving that back to my boys as well as other kids' neighborhood would be impactful. We still happen to buy a house back in the neighborhood and community. And, you know, God works in mysterious ways. So two weeks before we got our house is when I met Tavares. Uh, my name is Tavares Clinton. I'm uh, one of the founders and one of the coaches of the Minnesota Venom. So we started this program off on, I would say due to kids not able to afford the type of training and things in these type of neighborhood in the inner city. So with that came apart, me and my partner, Mac, came up with a plan to start training these kids to um, just give them all time and it turned into something bigger than what we thought it was gonna be. They don't have the, the, the individuals giving back, which is a lot of individuals think money is giving back. A lot of these kids need time and dedication. So our goals for this program is to develop these young men into great leaders in the world. Uh, My name is Dacian Schumann. Um, currently the coach and trainer of the Minnesota Venom. Football gave me the opportunity to just uh, bring me to a different potential in my life. Um, it brought me overseas to play in Europe. It brought me around the country in multiple states. Um, it gave me an outlet to a lot of things. The progress that I've seen in these boys is a lot of discipline. Um, when they first came, you could tell that they weren't paying attention too much. They were kind of lollygagging through drills, going through the motions, basically. Um, as we progressed with them and as we worked with them, we kind of taught them like discipline, commitment, uh, even sacrifice sometimes, you know, coming here and not being able to go play with whatever, you know, video games or stuff like that. Just kind of trying to bring them in the right direction in life. My name is Michael Wecker. I'm the father of, you know, one of the stars on this team, Little Michael. Coming to this program shows me that a lot of the other black fathers care as much as I do. It definitely shows me that the importance of, you know, showing my son that people of his color can do great things other than sports. This program is definitely more than a sports program. It's a brotherhood. My son has friends that, you know, he attends their birthday parties. Like, it's not just practice. He sees these boys a lot, so that's that's one thing I'm very grateful of. First, I was actually doing good, but I needed to work harder, and that's what I'm doing. If I want to get to the top, I have to work like my teammates. Some of them really just look up to me, and I look up to the, the ones who are older than me. Like, it makes me feel like they're really my brother. It takes me to the, the top and it helps when I can just help people. My name is Michael Wright. This is Golden Time Coffee that uh, myself and, and my wife Stephanie uh, put together uh, 22 years ago this coming March. The Lord allowed my wife and I to put this vehicle together being a coffee cafe, but the people drive it. And over the years, um, not only people from the community, uh, but black, white, polka dot and stripe, I always say. Everybody's welcome and uh, we do get everybody in. And I think that we've softened that rough edge um, um, for the community as well with the other businesses coming aboard and making this more of a destination place with our community needs in order for our young people to see um, those who look like them, who own businesses in their own community. So hopefully one day they can strive to do the same thing and they can do the same thing. What impacted me as a young person when I went to visit my cousin Mark and the Brazier family, which was a block away, you would walk into that house and if they're not sitting watching football together, you may walk in and hear uh, Jesse uh, Elder upstairs doing scales on his clarinet or saxophone. Uh, the smell of his Cuban cigars, uh, the whole ambiance and that whole feel, that jazz feel. Or my cousin Mark would be downstairs, prolific drummer, would be practicing his drums uh, and different drum techniques. Um, I think as life went on, that just kind of filed itself in my mind. And I know, you know, I went working for a, a large entertainment company 
and was exposed to a, a lot of things that, again, weren't conducive to entertainment. And so um, I focused on jazz and noticed that we didn't lose a step. I knew it'd be tough, um, but at the time I knew I was young enough that if it didn't work that I could still dig a good ditch if I had to and still had the strength to do so. Uh, so just working towards that endeavor, I know when we were putting um, the first Golden Time together, uh, we had the whole structure opened up and some young kids in the neighborhood walked by and asked us, what are you all putting here? And we told them a coffee shop and they laughed at us. And that just kind of internally kept that flame fired. And so here we are, uh, this coming March, almost 22 years later, we're still here. My name is Dee Dee Ray. I uh, built my house in 1978. And I remember me going to a workshop and they were telling uh, people at the workshop that they could actually purchase land for a reasonable amount of money in this area. And they call the area Summit University. And so I decided to look into it and I found out that I could purchase it, but I would have to build one year later. And so I decided to build and from there I had to get a contractor, I had to get plans. I went to the University of Minnesota and kind of explained what I wanted and they drew up the plans. I found a builder from Woodbury and he then built my house. This is one of the first areas that they were trying to develop that had um, housing projects and homes and townhomes all living in the same area and they were trying it out for other suburban areas in the country. The neighborhood back then felt a lot of love. We were thankful for what we had. Uh, we were gracious to, and kind to each other. And some of those things I think are missing today. And I think that's what brought our, you know, our neighborhood and our people together because we shared a lot of that. It still needs things like uh, groups, activities, um, involvement. We need to build that more as a village, being responsible. If you see something, say something. Um, and continue to bring that back to the community as if we're all building a village.